Mike. Okay, folks, uh, welcome. Th thank you for coming. Um, today we have Mason Harris, a uh, defensive end, um, and we have Justin Sumter, a wide receiver. They both had uh, big games last week. Mason had a uh, tie for the team lead with seven uh, tackles, including a couple for a loss that also included a sack. And Justin had two receptions for 96 yards, including a 69-yard uh, touchdown reception. And with that, I'll turn it over to Coach to make some opening statements. Obviously, thanks for everybody coming today. Uh, we got off to a great start. It was a great night in Johnson City. I'm proud of these guys, the way they came out and competed and fought through adversity. Um, early on in the game, it was a little bit, a uh, little touch and go, but. Uh, we regrouped and uh, found a way to finish. And uh, one thing I taught these guys about on Mondays, we, we have to learn as a football team that when you win, lose, or draw, you celebrate it, and then you have to move on to the next one. And I think that's the next part of where we are as a football program right now is learning to take a little success and build on it in the right way. And uh, obviously coming back home, I can't say enough things about, uh, I said it after the game, you know, what all this community's done, the involvement the community's had, the students, everything that's gone into bringing football to this university, uh, we get a chance to come home and play in front of a home crowd, sold out crowd. And I know these guys are excited about it. I'm excited about it. And this is uh, it's gonna be a special moment, obviously Saturday afternoon at four o'clock to run out, of, run out of the tunnel for the first time in school history in our own stadium with our home crowd. And uh, we're extremely excited about that and looking forward to it. Okay. Well. I'll ask Mason and Justin just to give some opening comments on their uh, experience in the first game and looking forward to uh, Saturday. Go ahead, yeah, well, so the first game is what I thought. You know, um, a lot of energy. Team came out, played really well. But, you know, we, we overcame. First, that first half, like Coach said, was up and down. But once we got going, you know, we got the rocking. And this is home game. I'm so excited. I've had probably 25 people hit me up from back home wanting to come up here and watch the game. And um, so we're really pumped for the home game, practicing hard, trying to get ready. And uh, I'll give some. Um, yeah, the first game, it was a great experience. You know, my first college game. Uh, I had a lot of fun being out there with my teammates. You know, we've been practicing for a whole year. We finally get to go show off what we can do. And I'm really just looking forward to this game because, you know, everybody's family's coming down and it's just going to be a great time. OK, we're well, now open it up for questions. Coach, do you believe in the uh, theory that teams make the most improvement between week one and week two? And if so, what needs the most improvement? Well, absolutely, and these guys will know. We've, we've talked a lot about it in the last 48 hours. I think the, um, you, you know, for our program, there's going to be a lot of improvement as we go game to game. But I think the biggest improvement is obviously going to be from game one to game two, simply because we've been going against each other for so long. This is the first chance we've had against an opponent to evaluate where we are. Uh, and as much success as we had, there's a lot of things we got to correct and, um, and to get to where we want to go. And we talk about getting better every week and making improvements. And that has been a huge emphasis. What kind of improvement are we going to make from game one to game two? And I'm definitely a believer that good football teams make a lot of improvement between game one and game two, without a doubt. What needs to be improved? Well, the number one thing is our efforts, uh, which we, pr we pride ourselves on effort, attitude, and toughness. And uh, we, we had uh, on our offense, defense, we had 147 efforts, all right, which is way beyond what's acceptable in our program. And uh, it's the first time we've been able to evaluate that against another team. And, uh, and we had a lot of missed assignments. Um, and those are two things we've been harping on a lot is, is effort and assignments. And those are two things we can control regardless of ability. You could control your effort and you could control knowing what to do. So uh, those are two big things right now that we're focusing on in practice. Um, I think these guys probably thought I was crazy coming out on Monday. I think they thought I was really crazy on Tuesday. Um, but there's a place we're going and uh, it's a process to get there. But the big thing, if we can go out and cut those things in half in game two, then we've made a lot of progress. Um, and, and that's really needs to be our goal is to cut the efforts in half, cut the misassignments in half and lock in as good as we played. And I think these guys will tell you, we, we made a ton of mistakes that in a, in, in a ball game that's a little bit closer, we would get beat. You know, you look at the turnovers down inside the red zone, uh, countless adjustment problems on defense where they were motioning, we weren't getting in the right call. One guy's doing one thing, another guy's doing another thing. So there's plenty to work on. The great thing about it is we can build on that with a win. You know what I mean? It's much harder to go build on that with a loss. We can build on it with a win. 
And, and that's our goal, and that's what we want to do is go build on these things with a win. So the two big focuses are, are, are effort and assignments. If you want to nail down, I mean, there's a lot of things, but those two things right now are really our focal points. You say 147 efforts, way past the acceptable. What's the acceptable? Well, I mean, when you get to a point where you're doing things right, we're a young football team, so we're not going to be there for a little bit. I mean, it's going to take a little time to get where we want to go. But the, 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 the really good football teams I've been a part of in the past, uh, on a bad day, you'd have inside of 20 on each side of the ball. On a great day, you're a 10, 9. And that's, that's championship football teams that I've been a part of. Um, and so that's where we got to start to work towards. Now, is this going to happen on Saturday? No, we're in a process right now. We're not going from 147 to 40. You know what I mean? And I, that's part of what we do. We talk about getting better. We talk about making improvements. And uh, I know these guys want to get there. I know they want to do it. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing sometimes during the week in practice. Um, but that, that's where we got to get to. And we can limit the missed assignments because the great thing about defense and offense, what we do here, we don't do a ton. We try to be good at what we do. And so we, lim we try to limit you know, where these guys can really play fast and concentrate on their assignments. Justin, uh, Justin Mason was just saying he's had a ton of friends from back home hitting him up for tickets. Uh, sounds like a tough ticket to get. Have you had the same kind of experience? Uh, yes, I have actually seven people in my family. So, you know, we only get four tickets for each uh, each person. So, yeah, my mom actually had to go buy season tickets so everybody can come. And then have a lot of family from Tennessee that's trying to come down here and know people from my church. So it's been pretty rough. Does it happen in class, too? I know there's a student lottery, but not everybody's getting them. Yeah, you know, a lot of the classmates have been trying to get tickets from me, too. But, you know, <laughs> family got to come first. So. You're already in the record books as having, you know, the, getting the first receiving touchdown. I guess in a perfect world, you're taking your grandkids to games at this stadium. What would it mean to, to score the first touchdown here on Saturday? Um, it'll actually be another big honor, you know, just being in history, you know, have something to look back on down the road, like look at look what I did, you know, all those years ago, you know, all the hard work I put in to get to this moment. It would just be really good. Yeah, Mason, the same kind of thing. I mean, you know, you're you're gonna be telling stories about this season for the rest of your life. How 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 you know, does that add some pressure to making this game count that you're gonna be retelling the first home game for, you know, decades? Yeah, it's exciting, like you said. Um first home game ever at this stadium ever, so 50 years down the road when I got grandkids and great grandkids, you know, I'll be telling them, hopefully I can get another sack, you know, first series like I did the last game. And I can tell them, you know, I was the first, you know, guy or hopefully one of the other, other guys get a sack before me. But hopefully I can say I got a sack in the first ever home game at Kennesaw State. So. I hope it gets a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess speaking of first, you, you see a lot of coach across college football, the, the great entrances and, and the traditions in college football. Are there any things that, that you're going to start, you know, from day one, any traditions you have in mind? Well, we kind of started a little bit of what we do on the road. Um, uh, obviously, we'll, you know, our program's motto is win the day. We have signs up. We're always doing that. We go to practice when we come out. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to come out of the tunnel on the far end zone. Um, where they bring the fight, uh, canopy's located. Uh, there's going to be a nice little walk behind the stadium on the way, which I think is going to become something special down the road. Uh, you get a first look at the guys walking out, ready to go. And uh, obviously, we've got a marching band, and uh, they're going to be there waiting on us as we come out. And, uh, and we'll kind of go from there and let these guys in this school and these students and everybody involved kind of let traditions play themselves out a little bit. Some of the best things I've been a part of have been created by the people that were most directly involved, and that's the student athletes and our students in this community. So we have some things, but then there's going to be some things I think that evolve as we go. Brian, you talked about uh, celebrating the win and then moving on to the next one. How much easier uh, does it make it when you have the first ever home game, being able to know that you're not going to have to, to work too hard to get these guys' attention? Well, I, th I think these guys are going to be ready to play. And I told them, too, I said, you got, you know, you got one chance to make a first impression. You know, you got one shot at making a first impression in front of our home crowd and uh, at home. So, and I know these guys are going to be ready to go, and they're going to come out and play with a lot of energy and effort and enthusiasm. Um, I don't question that at all. But uh, everything's a little easier when you come off a win to coach up. You know, it's it's easier to go coach things up after a win than it is when you lose. Um, so that's been good. There's a lot of positive things that happen that we build on. And then we take the things that maybe weren't so good, and we're going to try to get those corrected. You referenced um, <clears throat> missed assignments on the defense and some of the things that can be corrected. Did the offense play as well as 40-something points 
that they scored would indicate? Uh, no. No. We, we hit some plays and did some things on the perimeter. Uh, we never really got the, the our two back or the B back going consistently. Uh, we got to do a better job inside. Uh, we had a bunch of missed assignments ourselves. Um, but we had some guys make some plays. And I think what you look at is in the game, we had some guys make some plays and we had some guys playing with some effort. Uh, it wasn't a total thing where nobody was playing hard or everything was a missed assignment. But uh, but it was just a lot of room to improve. But, um, you know, we had some guys make some plays. You know, Mason had a couple nice plays. Um, Nick Parada had a nice play. You know, Justin had the long, and Darnell Holland had a great run. You know, then you look at Chaston Bennett, who reversed field, and our quarterback, of all people, has a layout block on a guy coming back, you know. So there was a lot of good things. I don't mean to sound like it was just – but I'm a coach, man. I, oh, we're always working to get better, you know. And, I, and the focal point since we stepped foot on this campus, and I told these guys this, was we are building something to win a championship. And fortunately, and I don't mean this in any egotistical way, I've seen it firsthand, FCS championships. I've coached them. I've seen what it looks like. I know what I want it to be here. These guys want it, and that's where we got to go. And we're going to keep pushing the envelope till we get to that point where we can get there. And I don't know when that's going to be. We take it week to week, rep to rep. We don't get ahead of ourselves, and uh, we're getting ready for the next one, and, and we're going to be better than we were in the first one. What that means on the scoreboard, I don't know, but we'll be, we'll, we'll, we're going to play better. Brian, as crazy as it sounds, having that first game on the road, did it somewhat limit distractions in terms of the first of everything? Whereas on the road, you didn't have to necessarily deal with players looking into the stands, finding their girlfriends or families, or dealing with the ticket requests and things of that nature. How do you, how do you combat that now that it is that you are facing that first of everything at home where there might be so many more distractions? For like well, and, and we call them circumstances. Uh, and we talk about them, and these guys will tell you, we're at Johnson City, Tennessee, where Thursday morning we go over the stadium, and they're all walking around, checking out the locker room, where we're going, pulled them all together and said, guys, there's where your mom and dad's going to be. You know it now, so don't look for them during the game. I said, here's the walk you're going to have to go down. I said, this is what the field, this is what we're doing, this is our home end. I said, none of that matters. I said, what matters is what we do when the whistle blows, when the ball's snapped, when those things happen. That's what's important. And we've talked about this a ton, about circumstances. So we have another first. Monday was the first Monday practice we've ever had. Tuesday was the first Tuesday practice we've ever had. Today will be the first Wednesday we've practiced. I mean, it's all first. I mean, these guys were a little bit of shock on Monday. They thought I was trying to kill them, but it was a normal Monday because they hadn't been a part of a Monday. Y'all agree? Yeah, I, I know that. And then yesterday they were like, goodness gracious, what have we done? Did we get beat? But it's, it's a normal week that they've never been a part of. Mason's been a part of it a little bit where he was before, but it's way different here than it was there, and he'll tell you that. So everything's a first for us. So every day we're coaching all those things and making the guys aware, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. All right, and we get to a game, don't let the circumstances impact the ability for you to do your job with great effort, snap in, snap out. We've talked about this from the day Justin stepped foot on campus. I mean, you know, I mean, from day one, we've talked about this. Will it be a challenge? Absolutely. I mean, it's our home crowd. It's the first time here. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect. It's going to be a challenge. But this is something we talk a lot about, you know, about let, you know, I told them we're going to run out of the tunnel, have a blast, and we get the sideline. Zone in. we got a ball game to play. Because there's no better way to make history than winning ball games. You know, it's great to run out of the tunnel for the first time, but you really want to put an exclamation point on it? Win the ball game. And I know these guys want to do the same, and I know, heck, they were talking about it when we were in the first game. You know, we want to win. You know, we, we like being part of history, but we want to win. And so all these things come into play, and we've talked about them. We'll continue to work on them. Don't mean it's going to be perfect, but but we'll continue to work on it. And, and, and they're challenges, but... Man, we've had challenges. These guys overcome a lot, man. They do a great job. You couldn't be more challenged than, than the defense was on the first drive of the first ever football game in the history of this school now. I mean, they know, I mean, they, you know, third and 22, the drive sound like it seemed like it was never going to end. Y'all yeah, huh? yeah, probably gassed. But play. you know what? Held them to a field goal. Find a way to come back and fight. Eliminate all the stuff and, and, and just keep just keep going. And, that, and that's what we're trying to do here. You said after the ETSU game, you're going to take some time to look at the film to decide who the game ball was going to go to. Mm -hmm. So many people had 
Monday morning, did you award a game ball after? Absolutely. Monday morning, uh, our schedule is we meet as a team on Monday morning, and uh, our offensive player of the game was Trey White, who uh, did some really good things on offense. Justin had a heck of a game as well. Um, and then on defense was Mason Harris. Uh, obviously, Mason had a, had a good game and did some really good stuff, a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Um, you know, he was, he was in the face of the quarterback when, uh, when Nick got his interception uh, for a touchdown, which I think changed the, changed the course of that game, uh, that single play. And then our special teams player of the game was a guy named Jace White, who's, uh, I think he starts on three of our four special teams. He also plays on defense. Um, he, he really did a nice job. Mason plays on kickoff. Uh, was very productive, and each week we'll give a we'll give those three. We also give two other awards um, on on defense. We're, we're, this is our first time doing this, Coach Newberry. It's kind of a uh, kind of a lunch pail award, but what we got we got a thermos, old school thermos. All right, one of those big old school thermos, and uh, this award is given to the guy that just comes to work every day. He may not have all the production, maybe that Mason might have had or Sump had in the game. Maybe he did or maybe he didn't, but this is a guy that comes to work every day with a great attitude and is doing everything you ask, and that was given to Nick Parada. He's a walk-on kid, try out, try it out here. I mean, you can't talk about a better story now and, and, and to change a game. And then on, on, uh, on offense, we have a knockdown award. And we're obviously, we're trying to get guys on the ground, so we have a belt, just like the, you know, the WWF, whatever you call that stuff. I'm not a... You guys know more about stuff than me. Anyways, belt. So Chiaza Nuadite got that because I think he had was it eight? Yeah. Eight knockdowns, something. So he had eight knockdowns. So those are the those are the awards we give out on uh, on Monday morning. We have team goals for every phase of the game, offense, even special teams. But uh, but those are the those are the five awards that we, we we're giving out, and we'll adjust a little bit as we go. But those will be pretty standard right now. What did you do with your game ball that Dr. Pat gave? Um, I took it back. Um, and then uh, Coach Bailey, our uh, director of football operations, is going to get it uh, going to get it fixed up. Um, very honored. I told our staff as soon as the game was over. I said, I'm very appreciative from the president, the AD, and everybody involved. Um, but it was a it was a game ball for our staff and our team. Um, you know, I'm just a, a piece of this puzzle, and uh, very proud of our guys and the way they work and some of the stuff I put them through. Sometimes they think we're, you know, I'm a little crazy, but appreciate their effort and attitude and vision, sharing the vision of what we're trying to do here. How did this opponent become the first home opponent? Did you know, have you ever heard of Edward Waters? Did you want them to be the first opponent? How did this come about? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, you know, I was directly involved in this. The guy that was the head coach before the coach now, uh, I, I knew from uh, back at Georgia Southern, he actually played at Georgia Southern. Okay. So I had called him because I was trying to find teams that were uh, early on in the season that were closer to us as far as, hasn't have, maybe haven't played football as long. You know, we were trying to schedule as alike as we could. East Tennessee State's a great opportunity. So, uh, so yeah, we had contacted him a while back uh, when we when I first took the job, actually, we got into scheduling um, about this game. So um, that was one, because we're trying to find teams that, you know, they had played football, then they shut it down for a while. They've been back for probably a decade now, but they're a little younger as far as their program goes. So we're trying to find some teams that were a little closer to us as far as what you know, as far as time frame of things. Um, so that's what we did. What do they do well on offense and defense? Well, on offense, they're kind of multiple. I think they want to get back in the gun. They got a really good quarterback that hasn't played, and we're not exactly sure, but he's supposed to be special. Uh, they got a lot of athletes. They're a little scary um, because they got some athletes that can make some plays, but they've done a little bit of everything on offense. You might catch them, and they'll be under center running the triple. All right, then they're going to get in the gun, and they're going to throw it around. And then they're going to get in the, you know, kind of the, I call it the pistol wishbone and run some option stuff out of that. But I think what they want to do is get back, and I think they'd like to throw the football and run the one-back running game and some of that stuff. Uh, it would be interesting to see what they come out and do. Defensively, they base out of an odd front, a 50 front. Um, you only see that a first few snaps, and then you're going to see multiple, multiple looks, uh, pressures, blitzes, a lot of man coverage. Um, so that's kind of been their, their MO up to this point. Um, you know, and, and the thing about it is, you know, if I'm them and I'm coaching down there right now, I'm sitting there going, hey, guys, you're getting ready to go to a place that's going to be sold out. The environment's going to be the best you probably play in all year. It's going to be on TV in the state of Georgia on CW69. What a better opportunity for this football team in to come in and make a little name for themselves. 
you couldn't – I mean, I'm sitting there going, man, the table's set if I'm down there coaching right now. And, uh, and I'm sure that's what they're doing. But that's kind of their – kind of what they do on both sides of the ball. And they're very multiple. Um, I'm sure they'll come in with a plan um, to kind of attack us. But that's what they've done so far on tape. Coach, can you talk about uh, Trey's performance more? I'm sure you've watched film now. So how do you feel about uh, how he led the offense and some of his reads? Uh, he did a good job. I mean, he uh, you know he missed a few reads, had a turnover. Uh, we had some miscues down in the red zone, uh, which was a, a cumulative effort. It wasn't just one person. Great thing about Trey's a great competitor. I mean, he is. You want to talk about a guy that every snap he's competing to win. Um, I was pleased with the way he handled himself. Trey sometimes lets his emotions get the best of him. I thought he did a pretty good job of that Thursday night of not letting that because he's got to be under control all the time. Um, and he made some plays that weren't. You know, it just he made a play. You know, it wasn't like we drew it up on the board. I can promise you. Um, you know, he found a way to make a play and and uh, and got the ball to Sump in a couple occasions. And we could have even done that a little bit more Thursday. Um, it just didn't come up. You know, once we got in a position where we needed to run the ball. You know, the score is what it was. We need to run the ball. So I was pleased. Uh, I think he would tell you if he were sitting here some things he can definitely get better at. We didn't have a. Uh, we didn't really run the re a bunch of read option. Most of ours was double in that game. Uh, a couple times he should have got the ball pitched. Um, but the big thing is, more importantly, as we've talked about, is take care of the ball. If you make a decision, just do it 100%. Even if it's wrong, we can line up and play the next down. If you get in a little bit of a gray area and do one or the other, the ball's on the ground, we got problems. Um, so for the most part, he only had one pitch that was a, obviously a turnover at a critical time. Um, but it was pleased with the way he played. He, he, he led our team, led our offense, thought he did a good job. How basic were you able to keep the offense considering you were facing another first year team and you're able to get up fairly quickly? Um, well, you know, our, our philosophy going in was if we can do the things that we've worked on day in, day out, and be good at what we do or give ourselves a chance. So, um, you know, we ran our base stuff. There really wasn't a lot of outside of that. I mean, we, we tried to keep it simple. Um, I'll be honest with you, that's kind of how, how we got to be right now. Uh, it's concentrate on getting better at what we do and how we do it, really on both sides of the ball. I mean, offense and defense. I mean, you're always going to have wrinkles when you go into a game. But, uh, but at the end of the day, if we can get good at what we do and play with great effort, I think, uh, I think we'll be pleased with how this thing goes. Justin, obviously you've had a successful game with the offense. How do you feel um, in the offense after your first game? And what do you want to see in week two? Uh, I feel really good about it, you know. Just everybody's out there. As we come together, we have to play as one. All 11 guys, that's how the offense works. And, you know, just having that chemistry, that's going to make us successful later on. You know, just everybody working hard at what they need to do. You know, just no one trying to do somebody else's job, just everybody doing their own. That's what's going to work the best for us. And just continue to do that down the road. Mason, you've played in front of 80,000 people. What do you expect out of the atmosphere here on Saturday? Oh, it's going it's going to be just, you know, like coach said, when you get on the sidelines, you're about football, but as far as atmosphere, atmosphere is atmosphere. It's going to be packed, people screaming, hollering. So, you know, it it's going to be wild. I think it'll be just as wild. You know, 80,000 people, that's a lot of that's a lot of people, but you you really don't once you get on the football field, you really don't notice it, you know. You you know, you're focused and what you got to do, but I feel, you know, out here, it's going to be just as crazy, you know. It's going to be the tailgating. You know, the walk, I think the walk, I'm really excited about that. That's going to be pretty cool, getting the walk, you know, and then walking to the tunnel and coming out. So I think it'll be just as crazy as uh, up there in South Carolina. And you mentioned that, you know, he wants the, the traditions to kind of be started <laughs> by the players. So any any ideas brewing from you guys of things to kind of get started? I, I don't have any. Justin might. I, <laughs> I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> have to wait till Saturday. Hey. <laughs> I thought I was going <laughs> to. We actually do have the owl walk that Mason mentioned. That's um, obviously we're gonna, you know, at the front of the stadium there. We'll walk. Uh, love to have as many fans out there. I know our kids love it when, when everybody's out there before the game, and uh, I know that'll be a big deal. Justin, a lot of people uh, wrongly talk about, you know, why would a wide receiver want to play an option offense? But talk about the unique opportunity you have in the offense. And Coach Gohan has been a part of offenses with, you know, Demarius Thomas, Stephen Hill guys that went to the NFL. <coughs> Let's talk about your opportunity to make big plays as a receiver, get to show off your blocking skills, which coaches love to see out of wide receivers because, you know, a lot of plays wide receivers have to block. So just talk about that. Well, actually, you know, I'm not the fastest receiver, so it's actually a good opportunity for me, you know, 
possession because all through high school people were telling me I'm a possession receiver. And, I mean, it doesn't offend me or anything, just as it's my type of game. So it actually helps out in the option. You know, my size, it helps with the blocking. But I actually got to get more aggressive with my blocking. Coach Daniels actually gave me the niceness award because I was the least <laughs> aggressive with my blocking this game. So I got to make sure I pick it up. And, you know, it's just a great opportunity because I like being a team player, you know, and just being with the option, you know, you have to be a team player to make everything work because if I don't get the backside cut off, that can cancel a touchdown, you know. So just got to. He's a lot faster than even giving himself credit for, let me tell you. Coach, who was the uh, – what was the name of the coach that you worked out the deal with that was at – Brad Bernard. Yeah, he was the head coach at the time. Any uh, – uh, when you had a chance to look at the uh, your film, any concerns considering the first two games they put up 76 and 58? Well, obviously, when you put up that many points, regardless of opponent or whatever, you you know, that's what I'm saying. They, they got athletes, and that's what's a little bit scary with those athletes if they get energized by the environment, you know, versus maybe some of the environments they've been in. They get energized by that environment. Um, you know, we, we need to come ready to play, and that's really the bottom line. We need to come play our best football game um, and continue to get better every week and, and go from there. Any more questions? Coach, on one of Jay Bowen's touchdown runs, I was curious, in watching this video broadcast, they described it was when he was on the right side and came around and scored on the left side. And they described it as a handoff, but the video wasn't that good. It looked to me like the ball was dropped on the ground and he scooped it up and ran around. That'd be correct. <laughs> yeah, we fumbled the uh, we fumbled we tried to pick up the pace a little bit and uh we were tired and uh we fumbled the exchange and fortunately Jay didn't do what he was supposed to, so he was standing right where the ball was. <laughs> <laughs> and he picked it up and scored. Kind of stumbled yeah, yeah, he picked it up and he and he found a way to get in the end zone, which there again, I mean it's it, it's not like you wanted it to be, but at the end of the day, it was six points, and uh, we'll never complain about that. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Appreciate it.